rhomboidius minor on top and then this big broad rhomboidius major here and then these muscles of the rotator cuff. The supraspinatus tends to sit on top. Chest x-ray should be taken to confirm whether this has been reduced. The biceps, the short head, and the long head, which goes up to the humerus here. So rotator cuff tears. Rotator cuff injury can include any type of irritation or damage. They're among the most common conditions affecting the shoulder, as you all know. The tendons of rotator cuff, not the muscles, are usually torn. Of the four tendons, the supraspinatus is the most frequently torn as it passes below the acromion. Uh, the acromion has a little burr on it, and this little burr can rub on the supraspinatus, and it gets more hypertrophic in older people. And when I say older people, I mean over the age of 50. So the tendons of the rotator cuff are torn. A partial thickness tears often appear as fraying. Usually partial thickness tears are left alone and the patient's put on physical therapy. Full thickness tears are through and through tears. These can be a part of the tendon, pinpoint tears or buttonhole tears, or in tears involving the majority or the entire tendon. Full thickness complete tears, complete detachment of the tendon may result in impaired shoulder motion and function as a result of repetitive microtrauma in the setting of degenerative rotator cuff tendons, inflammatory mediators, and oxidative stress causes further rotator cuff degeneration and breakdown and can cause rotator cuff tears and frozen shoulder at the same time. So this is why this pain can move around. Look at how much of the sensory cortex is devoted to the shoulder. That little blip right there. Look at how much is devoted to the thumb <laughs> and the rest of the hand and the face and the lips. Professor Robinson just concluded an anatomy class. Sir, I'm rather impressed by the atmosphere and your attitude in how you conduct things. What was the actual class about today? Yes, it was about the treatment of orthopedics how to deal with uh, joint replacement, how to deal with fractures, and how to deal with low back strain, neck problems, that sort of thing. Most interesting, we all could use a little assistance in that area. Right. Where are you from? I'm from Pennsylvania, um, in the Philadelphia region. How many years are you studying medicine? What are your plans for the future? Well, I'm currently, I have my master's degree as a physician assistant, and I do cardiothoracic surgery and I plan on doing this program and graduating with my MD degree and um, hopefully going into internal medicine actually. So, a little bit of a change of pace. <laughs> Absolutely spectacular, just great. So how long have you been with USAT? Um, since July of 2013. What are your plans? My plans are also to finish, get my MD. I am currently in family medicine and I want to continue in family medicine. Do you live in the United States or are you from some other location? I do. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. What are your thoughts with regard to USAT? I think it's an excellent model for a program. I think it's, it's very great. It's very flexible, allows us to continue to work and maintain our home lives while you know, studying for to reach our dreams in a non-traditional format. It's, I think it's an excellent opportunity and I look forward to seeing it grow. Krista, how did you learn of USAT? Actually, one of my colleagues at the hospital I work with has finished the program and is, will be entering into his residency in July at our hospital. So he's had great success with the program and it's something I've wanted to do for years. And USAT has made it um, a possibility for me. So I'm very excited about that. Excellent, absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.